is up guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi hello my name is Rachel and I am an intermittent alternate day faster and I have been doing it for about two and a half years now if you're not new hello again today we have a different kind of video for you guys since we're kind of all on this global lockdown I decided that this would be the perfect opportunity since my wedding was rescheduled to start a challenge for everybody who is at home I'm calling this the 95 days of fasting challenge basically starting tomorrow Monday March 23rd. I said it wrong in my Instagram post and I apologize a million times. I had so many people correct me on it. We will start doing intermittent alternate day fasting, basically like what I did in the beginning. Monday would be our first fasting day. Tuesday would be an eat day, Wednesday a fasting, Thursday an eat, Friday a fasting, Saturday an eat, Sunday a fasting, Monday an eat, Tuesday of fasting and we will just alternate it back and forth for the next 95 days. That is what I plan on doing the next 95 days anyway. However, if you want to take a part of this challenge, just know that you can do any type of method that you want. You can do the 16-8, you can do the one meal a day, the 24 hours of fasting, the 4-3 method of fasting, but for me personally, what I'm going to be doing is every other day like what I did in the beginning. So if you have no idea what intermittent fasting is, let me tell you. Intermittent fasting is a form of eating Eating that doesn't tell you what to eat but when to eat. You don't have to worry about counting your macros, doing the carbs, doing your proteins and all things like that. I'm literally starting out how I did in the beginning which was just eating under my calorie count. Of course now since I've been doing this journey for so long I'm much more mindful of what I am eating. You know I try to be cautious of the things that I'm putting into my body but if you are just now starting know that I ate all the carbs and I still was able to lose 98 pounds in my first year of intermittent fasting. Why am I doing this challenge for 95 days? Well, since we had to postpone my wedding till June 27th, 2020, I decided to go ahead and do a 95 day challenge between Monday and the day before my wedding day. They say it takes 21 days to start a habit. So I figured having some kind of an accountability group for us all to come together and post our struggles and our successes would be really awesome in an opportunity like this when we can't get out into the real world and go to the gyms and go to the restaurants to hang out with friends and just be together in this moment of change. This is a good opportunity to do it. If you've never done intermittent fasting, you might be asking, how do I start? What I'm gonna tell you guys to do first, and I know this scares so many people, is to jump on the scale and weigh yourself if you have one in your home. I know a lot of people do, but there's also a lot of people who don't. For those of you who do have a scale, go ahead and jump on and weigh yourself this one time, one time, and then put it away and don't look at it again until April 22nd. Give yourself a whole month where you're not obsessing about the number on the scale. This is what I did that helped me get through my first months of intermittent fasting. Because if I would have consistently jumped on the scale every other day and saw my weights fluctuate with the amount of food I was eating or whatever it might have been, I would have been discouraged and given up. Please do yourself a favor. Weigh yourself once and then put the scale away. You do not need to obsess over that number, especially during this time. If you don't have a scale, the best thing I'm gonna be able to tell you guys is to just really monitor how your clothes feel over the next couple of months. That's gonna be the best way you're gonna be able to notice change in your body. Secondly, if you have a measuring tape, go ahead and take your measurements as well. If you don't have a measuring tape, a way you can do this is with like a string or a piece of yarn and wrap it around your body and then take it and measure it over like a, a hardware store measuring tape basically. But if you have a fabric measuring tape, that's the type that I'm talking about, where it's soft and flimsy, where you can wrap it around your body, go ahead and take those measurements, write them down once, and then do not measure yourself again until April 22nd. Do yourself this favor, please. You wanna make sure that you're measuring your bust, your waist, and your hips. To me, those were the most important measurements that I started out with whenever I started documenting my measurements basically. The next thing you want to do is calculate the calories that you will be eating on your eat days. Now, whenever I first started intermittent fasting, what I did for this was calculate my basal metabolic rate or my BMR and my TDEE or my total daily energy expenditure. I did this by going to tdeecalculator.net. You put in your height, your weight, how active you are. Whenever I first started, I was sedentary. If you know your body fat percentage, if you're male or female, and this helps you 
determine what your calorie count will be for the day. What I did was take my BMR and my TDE, add them together, and then divide it by two. That will be basically the amount of calories that you'll want to put into your calorie counter. That way, if you eat over that a little bit, you know that you're not eating over your total daily energy expenditure and you're not eating more calories than your body is burning. Next, you'll want to choose an app where you can actually count your calories. I highly suggest you count your calories. I have people ask me all the time, do I have to count my calories? No, you don't necessarily have to, but I think it is a good way to start documenting what you're eating. So you can kind of judge if you're eating too much or too little. You can eat too little. That's why I say you need to make sure that you're eating between your BMR and your TDEE to make sure that you're eating over the amount of calories you're burning while resting, but you're still eating a little bit under the amount of calories that you burn every day. I hope that makes sense. I personally use the Lose It app to track my calories. You can actually go into the app and adjust where you want your calories sitting for the day. And then I just go through and I document everything that I eat. And I know it takes a lot of work and a lot of time, but I find that it has helped me manage an accurate calorie amount by doing it this way. Whenever I say I calculate everything, I'm talking about the oil, the garlic powder, the onion powder, all the little things that you think might not add up that actually does. Since a lot of us are gonna be making our own foods now, it's super easy for you to look on the back of the packaging to see how many calories you're consuming. If you wanna take it up even another notch, you can download the Life Fasting Tracker. There's a couple different fasting trackers out there that you can download on your phone and you can start documenting how long your fasts are. I personally just watch the clock, but Life Fasting Tracker is a great way for you to just document when you start your fast. You can watch it go up to 12, 14, 16, however many hours that you're planning to fast. And you can stop it whenever you're done with your fast. It kind of helps you keep accountable that way. Some tips to help you guys get through your fasting days were to always stay distracted, always have something to do if you can. When I first started, Netflix was the way to go for me. There's so many other things that we can do now that we're home to keep you distracted from going to the kitchen and eating. If you do have kids in a family that don't plan on participating with alternate day fasting, you could always meal prep the night before so whenever it is a fasting day, you don't have to go through the process of cooking the food and being tempted, basically. Make sure you drink lots of water to help keep you full if you feel like you're hungry, or you can also do black coffee. My sweater says coffee water, you know the drill. If you guys have been following me for a while now, you know that's kind of the thing that I always say at the beginning of my fasting days to help get me through the day. Of course, you can always do a modified fasting version if you prefer. That means that you can eat up to 500 calories on your fasting day to help you get through your days. And 500 calories actually goes a lot further than you would think. My first week of intermittent fasting, I allowed myself to eat 500 calories on my fasting day days to help me get through since I was so new at it. The next week I was able to drop the 500 calories completely and then just do every other day fasting. So what's the deal with this challenge? Basically on my Facebook page I started a group called 95 Days of Fasting where you guys can go to and join if you would like. I plan on getting on there at least once a day and doing a live video, posting at least one recipe a day and showing you guys some workouts that you can do while being home. A lot of you guys might be asking do I have to work out with intermittent fasting and the answer is no. No, I didn't work out at all for the first six months of intermittent fasting and I lost 62 pounds at that point. If you would like to get up and moving around since we are staying in the house all day now, I plan on trying to come up with some workouts for you guys as well as link some others from different fitness channels or Instagram channels or whatever to kind of help you guys get up and moving since that's kind of what I've been having to do. I'm fortunate enough to have an in-home gym so I'm trying to come up with some ideas for you guys that require no equipment. Once I come up with those, I plan on posting those on the page too. The biggest thing about this group is I want us all to be together in kindness and accountability. If you come onto the page and you talk negatively or you put others down or you can't help uplift other people during this time, I will ban you. And I don't like being like that, but this is a hard enough time to have people come onto the page and be negative. Please come onto the page and post your successes post your struggles. I want this to be a page where we can all come together and uplift each other whenever we need it to help us get through the days ahead. I feel like I am leaving so much out for you guys, but I really hope that we can do this challenge together. I think this is the best way for us to do it right now. I'm super excited to get to know all of you. This is a big opportunity and a big chance for us all to just come together and celebrate one another. And I think that's really needed in a time like this. If you have any other questions, please feel free to drop them below and I'll answer them. Jump over to the Facebook page, ask them there. I feel like I'm leaving out so many things, but there's just so many I wanna tell you guys and we have 95 days to do it. So if you come into this challenge a little past the 95 days, if it's like 70 days or 75, 
feel free to join in still. You don't have to start on 95 days exactly. This is supposed to be a chance for health and growth and it doesn't matter when you start as long as you do. I hope you guys are excited for this challenge. I sure am. I will see you guys tomorrow on Facebook when we start our challenge. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you soon. I'll get you guys on the next one. Thank you.